Charters. Captain Adam Knutson from Hiatus Charters here. Uh, got some great captains with me to talk about today's topic. Uh, make sure, before we get started, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell. That'll get you a reminder every time I post a new video. Uh, glad you're here today. Got to give a shout out to our sponsors, uh, Bush Light, always a great sponsor of ours, and Captain Chuck's too here in Ludington. Well, let's bring in the captains and get the show on the road. My name's Wynn Wolf, and um, I'm uh, my main port that I fish out of is St. Joseph. I have a charter boat out of there. I also fish up and down the coastline in all the tournaments. Um, I fish pretty much every tournament on the lake, and then I spend August usually up in Manistee. Hi, my name is uh, Kevin Hughes, and I fish out of the port of Onekama. Uh, been a captain out of there for 40 years. I've been fishing there for like 55 years. Um, it's a great place to fish. My boat's called the Sandpiper 3. I had the Sandpiper 1, Sandpiper 2, and now I'm on the Sandpiper 3. And um, because I'm retired now, I uh, charter fish uh, most of the season. So we're ready to get things up and running first week of May. Hello, my name's uh, Captain Mark Williams, Silver Diction Charters out of Ludington, Michigan. I've um, been fishing out of Ludington for over 40 years and just really enjoy fishing up and down the coast of Michigan. All right, today we're going to talk about our probe, what, uh, what probe we're using on, on your boat, um, what information you're gathering from uh, your probe, and then what changes that you would maybe see in your readings or, or and how that would change your, the way that you're fishing. So, Mark, do you want to kind of sure, take it can. off? Yeah, um, I'm partial to the fish hawk. Uh, when I was fishing the smaller boats, uh, used uh, actually the one that you just would hang over the side to get the surface and such. But uh, as technology evolved in that, moved to the fish hawk. And, you know, I really like it because you get the down temp. And also with the new ones, you can actually have the depth that reads back so you know what that swing is on your rigger. So I'm looking at that and trying to find that temp break or where there is a temp break uh, down there. And then check the current, especially up north here with all our structure checking that current to see what's going on down there awesome uh so kevin how about on uh, the sandpiper what do we have uh um I'd, I'd have to say the same um we started off uh, back uh, 40 years ago where we had the fish hawk where you'd uh, have a little reel up deal and you'd send it down on your hand just to get the temperature so i uh, tried a few other products along the way I uh, used to have to have wired cable that shoot it through the cable, but uh, Fish Hawk, uh, we've went through several generations of them now. Uh, we're still using the X4 on our boat, but the um, the ability to, to shoot the signal through the water is just uh, really nice. And, you know, truthfully, um, if we don't have our probe working for whatever reason, we feel like we're almost naked out there. So it's just, uh, it's that essential. Uh, we use it to find that temperature of the surface, some of the breaks, where the temp is down in the water column. And then like Mark says, to match up your speed and temp at the ball versus the surface. And, you know, some days it helps, tips you off to a, a lot of current. And so it's, uh, I don't think, if you don't have a good uh, speed indicator on your boat, I think some days uh, you're not even fishing. Yeah. So that's, you know, the most important thing out there I think is speed and second most important thing is speed and the third most important thing is speed so <laughs> it's um it's pretty integral at least in, uh, from what we found absolutely yeah how about you win well i would say um I, I agree with kevin on this uh, i i also use the fish hawk and uh i think there's three major ingredients to when you're out there fishing and mostly for somebody that uh it, uh for example somebody that doesn't get out very much but the three main things i would say is location I'd say speed, and then I'd say, you know, what are you using? You know, using spoons or using meat, whatever it might be. But so getting back to the speed side of it, there's always, with the fish hawk, you can kind of determine what is the surface speed, what is it down deep, and also uh, detail, you know, the details of the of the temperature itself. So um, there's no question in my mind that, that um, uh, it's a very, very important tool, uh, especially as the season goes on. In the spring, when I'm fishing down in the St. Joseph area, I'm, I would say it's not as important. I do use it if we're fishing down deep, but when we're fishing up high for smaller fish or, you know, the spring fish, I, it's not as important of a tool as it is later in the season. Yeah, I think that um, 
as you when you're fishing higher in the water column, your GPS speed is probably pretty similar to uh, what your lures are doing. And then, but definitely as you go deeper and deeper, um, that definitely changes things. Um, so I have had the luxury, maybe I have fished as a mate for a lot of years, so I've pretty much used all of the different um, probes. Um, we are using a fish hawk now. Um, I do believe the fish hawk is the most reliable uh, of the ones that I've used. Um, you know, I had a depth rater for many years that I used and I was very comfortable with the depth rater, but I did find that I had to do some, uh, some interesting, uh, terminations to get it to, to really consistently work. And then it, it would only work to a certain depth. Now the original fish hawks, um, with the box, uh, you know, I, I think that those, the way we fish now is as deep as we fish. I, I don't think those would have worked, but the X4 and, and all of the new new line definitely seem to to do it. This is their um, new one. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but this is a, a portable unit that requires no uh, transducer mounted to the back. So if you're on a boat and you wanted to add something good season or, or if you fish different boats and you wanted to have a consistent uh, a speed thing, um, you know, I talk about this a lot as far as speed. I 100% agree. And it, speed is the, the, that's what catches fish it, and getting that. It doesn't mean that there's one speed that you can go, but there's one speed for the baits that you're probably using or your program um, where it's going to be the best and direction plays into it. But really direction is just your alignment with the current, which leads directly back to speed there again. So, um, you know, I do think uh, when we're, you know, setting up early in the morning and, and we're looking and, and we're dropping that probe down and finding where that uh, cold water begins and where, where it is, you know, where it hits 48 degrees or, but we, I like to fish in that 54, 52, 54 degree water and put a lot of baits in there. So having that probe in the morning um, is, is a huge advantage. You know, I can kind of align my uh divers and my and my downriggers right in that temperature that i that i want to use um but the same thing as you guys you know i'm watching the probe and as the probe is you know if, if all of a sudden you know usually the graph you'll see a change in the graph but you'll look at the probe and all of a sudden at 60 foot it's 60 degrees where it was 52 so you kind of have an idea of that there's a pocket of colder water behind you and you know it'd be a good indication to to flip around at that point. Um, Adam, Adam, if I could interject, I, I think that one point you just made there is that um, for me, in a, and I think a lot of us, the um, the evolution of the displays is key because as you remember, that box was so small, you could hardly see it. And now with the big LED, LCD displays where the numbers are large, it it's allows you a lot more to be cognizant of it and you don't have to have your face right in it to see yeah. it. So I think that that's very helpful. The uh, display output, especially with it's backlit now, and yeah. plus the large letters. I see Wynn's got his glasses there. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's helpful that you can almost be in the back deck and, and look up to your helm or wherever you have your thing placed. And you can see it, you know, eight to 10 feet away because anybody who used the other units, if your face wasn't right in sure. it, and it seemed like it didn't extrapolate very well. It, it would go from 3.0 to 1.9. And it seems like they have a smoothing mechanism in now, so that it seems like it's more accurate. Where the earlier models, it, it, it would be jumping all over the place. Yeah, and I think that with the earlier models, it, it seemed to be delayed. Like you would change speed and it would take, you know, sometimes 10 seconds before it really, you, you started to see a consistent speed again. But I think with that, I think with the old probe going with that box, that old black probe used those nine volt batteries and it ate those nine volt batteries like candy. And I think that might've been some of the delay that you're talking about there. That might've been as those batteries were getting weaker to yeah. go through there. But I know on my fish Hawk, it's got the Bluetooth uh, enabled. So, you know, when you got the charter boat there, you've got a bunch of people on board. It's kind of nice to, my mate actually has the app on his phone so he can actually look at it. So even if you can't see the big display that they have now, you can see it with your phone and see that app on there. So that's, that's, that's yeah, the a big, big help. Uh, yeah. We were kind of talking about this um, previously, but you know, I'd be excited to see 
some kind of a, a, a device that would with one, you know, like as you save a GPS point on your screen, you get a bite, you save a GPS point and it would log all the, all of that information, speed, you know, um, the, on your probe, what your probe temperature was, um, maybe even your GPS angle. That's called your notebook. I know, but it takes a long time to write all of that in there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I would use it more on charters when yeah. I don't have the luxury of not having anything to do other than gather information and, and take notes on that. So uh, what about temperature wise? Like what, what are you guys looking for when you're, when you're out? Like what, what temperature on your probe is kind of your sweet spot that you like to see? Well, for me, you were mentioning like that 50, 54 degree range that you're looking at. You know, as the summer goes on, I'd, I'm looking for those kings that are out there elusively. And I'm actually looking for that 42 to 48 degrees. So I'll put that probe down deeper and deeper and see what's what. But of course, as I go through, I look at your temperatures, match that up as well. But I'd really like to try and find that maybe 44 degree uh, water temp and just see where that's at and put maybe my meat rigs and my flies in there to see, you know, if there's there or just above them and uh, see how that works. The other thing is, is I, I run my probe on my chute. Some guys run them on their out and downs, but I put it on my chute and that is the first thing that goes in because now that I feel it gives me the most accurate um, troll angle and everything. Whereas, you know, if you get a little bit of surface current, because we all know as you bring those probes up and down, things change, not just temperature, but you could change in current as well. So I think it's important it's on that chute. Yeah. Um, you know, is that, do you guys all run, are you all shoot rigger guys for probes or? Well, on my boat, I actually have four down riggers, but I use, uh, I'm only running three riggers and the fourth one, I actually have the probe on. So I'm constantly moving my probe, um, but I don't actually use that rigger for fishing itself. So, um, and the getting back to what you're saying about temperature, I, I would say that my main thing in the morning is to find out where that break is at. And, you know, if it's, from 60 to 50 or it's from 50 to 40 or whatever it might be. And uh, I use that as the basis. And then from there on throughout the day, monitoring it to see if that's, uh, that that temp, you know, hasn't changed or gone up or down. You know, when I'm offshore fishing for steelhead, I usually will try to find a break and that moves up and down out there. Sometimes it's on the surface, but I also find that there's a lot of times that it's, uh, that it's actually down 40 foot. And I try to, for steelhead, I always kind of run all my baits, you know, about 20 feet above the break. And it just seems to be better for steelhead. Sometimes that's, like I said, right on top, but other times you have to use lead core or something, get it down a little bit. So, but it is definitely a very important tool most of the time of the year. So, Yeah. Um, Kevin, go ahead. Oh, I concur. You know, and, and like you say, we move ours around because, you know, sometimes if you got your rigs by the bottom, you certainly don't want to lose a $200 probe. So, uh, you know, you, that's one thing you got to sort of babysit that thing and make sure you keep it, uh, you know, with the lubricant around there. And so it's, and, and, and working properly. But uh, I agree that uh, it's, but, you know, but one thing you don't want to get to, I mean, I've seen tournaments won and lost this way and even charters, you sometimes don't want to get sucked into too much, especially on the king, adult king salmon that you want to just stay right in the temperature. Because you know what, I, I remember a tournament one time, the guy was just filleting them, just pounding them, and they're up in bath water. Mm -hmm. You know, warm, warm, yeah. warm, dark fish, ready to roll. So I think sometimes, you know, that don't always, you get uh, lured into, it's gotta be a certain temperature from the bite, particularly on adult kings when they're um, starting to uh, migrate home. You sure. know, they, and and they'll, be in, they'll be in bath water, especially you know, low light first thing in the morning or the evening that come up. So temperatures is critical though. Yeah, I, I agree entirely. Um, I think a lot of, a lot of, uh, fishing is, uh, adjusting constantly. Um, but also, um, you know, you can't put all your ducks in one, one spot, you know, you put all your baits right here. You, you know, you do have to really cover a lot of water columns and, and like that in the spring where the water is basically all the same temperature, there's not really a lot of reason for them to be in one location in the water column over the other. So it's kind of one of those things where you're running that really widespread. Um, we actually added a fourth downrigger uh, a few years ago. We started to um, fish deeper and deeper and deeper. And I didn't really like having my probe, you know, way down all the time. I like, I wanted to be able to have that probe somewhere where that temperature changes in the water column, even though I'm fishing 
you know, 200 foot down or 250 foot down, um, you know, I still want to know at 70, 80 foot what, what that temp's doing, how it's changing. Um, the same kind of idea of how yeah, that thermal moves up and down. Uh, at least in Ludington, we have that same thing. Um, so we have a, 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 a corner rigger that, yeah, we don't, I don't know that there's ever been a bait put on it. Yeah. Um, but it just lives down there. And, the, and then the probe never comes up. Um, you know, you never lose speed when you're changing your chute or, or resetting it out and down wherever your probe's located. So I think that that's really helped us and, and be more consistent and, and maybe using our probe differently because it's nothing to bring the probe up to 40 foot. You're not actually bringing a bait up. You're just moving that sensor. Well, that was good when I had my old boat and I had the fourth rigger. Now I've only got the three, so I've had to adjust to that. But I agree with what you guys are saying there. The other thing, though, that sometimes happens, especially if you've got a mate on the back of the boat or you're cruise fishing, is they'll move that probe and you may have been sitting there dialed in at, like you said, maybe 65, 70 foot. You know what your speed is. You're running your 1.9, maybe 2.1, and it's perfect. And they moved it up to check something or whatever, and all of a sudden that speed changed. You're like, oh, shoot, I got to adjust the boat. Well, no, they moved the probe. So you got to be cognitive of that because I've made that mistake in the past. Well, I think that's a good point in that um, you're, all of your baits aren't in 60 foot. So mm-hmm. if you're, you, know, you, you find that you're running 2.1 on your probe at 60 foot and, it, and then you're getting bit all through the water column, that's probably your speed and then but like you said if they drop that down to 110 or they brought it up um you know to 40 foot or something and your speed changed but you didn't change your direction and there really wasn't a reason that that can be misleading for sure just like when you get a flurry or something you know you may sit there and like you said you're getting bit through the whole column and all of a sudden you know you had a rear go at say 45 and the pro was at 65 well you want to bring that up to that 45 to get bit and you do but then you left the probe there at 45. Well, the speed was down there at 65. That's That can be troublesome at times. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, I'm lucky having Angie on board, and she's more <laughs> dealing with direction, speed, and all that, and making and keeping up on the on the data part of it. Um, and every time we get a hit, you know, she records you know, surface speed, um, uh, probe speed, and GPS speed on the bottom and do a comparison. And it is really amazing during the day how that does change from hour to hour as to and location to location as to you know the the different speeds uh, i remember the holland tournament this is quite a few years ago that we won we uh without the probe i don't think we would have done so good we were fishing by a buoy off of holland or sport sheldon and we ended up actually figured out that the boat almost had to sit still on the surface but the current was rolling so fast down below that we were basically anchored and using meat and everything was working down below. Now, without the probe, I would have never known that that, that current was that strong down below. But that's, we sat there and stared at that buoy the whole day and caught fish. And it was like fishing in a river. So so it is a, just an important tool at times. Yeah, that's, um, you know, two years ago, uh, you know, my team was fortunate enough to put it together two days in Ludington, in, in one Ludington, and the same exact thing. We were fishing lake trout. And I was actually only going in and out of gear to keep the boat straight. We were actually on the GPS form. We weren't moving at all. And we were just lighting up big trout. And mm-hmm. But without a probe, I would have never known. I would have just been going too fast the entire time and not yeah, catching yeah. anything and just thought there was no, you know, no active fish in that, in that area where all I was was a speed deal. So, But speed, 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 speed. Yeah, I can't. That's, that's I, critical. I say it all the time, and I, I don't know that people realize how important speed is and, and, you know, direction, but really direction is just bringing you back to speed. So, Well, now with that being said, though, like you and I have had this discussion, Adam, all these probes are not the same. In other words, if we're going down there and your producing speed is 1.7 at that depth, my probe may be at the same depth etch that thing but it's showing 1.9 or whatever because they're not calibrated the same so i know i'm one that you know hey what's my speed over ground and i know it's like i ask you and you're like i don't care i'm looking at my probe well for me to match you i've got to know what your speed over ground is so then i can get to the my probe and it may be two tenths off or something i know i fished up by you uh, up in onekama and you're going along you told me what your speed was down below and i'm like man i said i'm getting bit and I'm, i'm faster than that well 
looked at our GPS speed and we were the same. Our probes were just different. So mm-hmm. that's important to realize as well. Yeah. And if you're using, if you aren't using a fish hawk, but you are using a sub troll or, or a depth rater, they do read different. Mm-hmm. Um, we've actually ran boats right next to each other with the probe in the same spot on both boats just to see if, what the difference was. And there was actually a couple tenths of a mile an hour difference. It always seems like with a more sub troll that, you know, that 1.8. It's always the sweet spot, but if you're driving next to it with a fish hawk, you're probably doing two, three. So, I mean, (laughs) there again, yeah, you have to trust the information that you're getting. But personally, I drive with my probe. My probe is what depicts my speed. And, uh, you know, sometimes I vary my speed to uh, for species or or whatever reason, or if the fish wanted a little bit hotter that day. But I, I do watch that probe as my speed indicator. Well, one thing, uh, because those probes are expensive and, and different ones read different ways, you should always have a spare on board. At least we do. Um, at least a, one spare. But last couple of years, we, we've certainly, uh, we always try to check that line, uh, the termination. We like to use a nice, uh, a, you know, clincher. And then we went to uh, some of those Dreamweaver uh, rubber snubbers. Uh, and uh, once we went to those, uh, we've lost a lot less uh, down air balls and, uh, you know, knock on wood, we've went, uh, you know, a few years without losing a probe, which is um, a lot of hours in late because most of the probes are lost in rough conditions. And a lot of times when the person's bringing the down rigger up, it, you know, they, they hit the end and it snaps off and it's a big bunch of crocodile tears. But, uh, you know, like, <laughs> that's why, you know, like Lynn said, if you can have a designated down rigger where you're not hauling it up for every time you get a strike, um, you're just eliminating the chance of uh, dumping that thing. Cause uh, it's, it's sad, it's a sad state of affairs when it goes over the side yeah. to the bottom. <laughs> I think yeah. that the, the point you made with the the snubber, the Dreamweaver snubber, we, we run those as well. And we find exactly the same thing that we um, lose less ca- cannonballs when we run those. Um, we lose a lot of cannonballs. I mean, we bounce bottom most of the time. Always we have one rigger down there. So we do lose a lot of cannonballs, but it definitely seems to have helped. And I think that that shock, initial shock, you get a little stretch and it probably does save that cable. Now, um, are you guys all running uh, wire on your downriggers or are you running Power Pro? Actually, I use Power Pro on mine. You do? Yeah, I've been doing that for years also. And uh, I think it's six of one, half dozen of the other, you know, but I I did find on my boat that, it's quieter, you know, um, you don't hear the wire running through the water. And, and on my boat, I just feel it does better than the, the natural wire. Do you have problems when, um, in the years with heavy fleas? Do you get fleas on it? Um, you get into the summer, there are, t- I, I, you know, I haven't had a serious problem with the fleas on those. Now I'm using 25-pound uh, balls, so, okay. um, and I, there might be a little drag back, you know. Now, my braid on my divers, yes, I do have problems when we get into the summer season when the, when the fleas are bad. But uh, but on my downriggers, no, I don't think I've noticed it too much. Okay. Yeah, yeah and I'd agree with him because I'm, I'm running the Power Pro 2 on mine, and I don't have it the issue on my riggers uh, with the heavier downrigger balls. And, you know, this year when I uh, had got the new boat, I didn't have time to change out the riggers, and so that came with um, wire on the riggers and – I lost more, just like you guys were saying, cannonballs just because of the kinking. kinking and, you know, and different things along those natures. In fact, one of the, I think it was a third trip out. I got my probe down there. My mate brings it up. And I mean, I look back there and it's literally hanging right here out the back. He had just hooked it up and he was getting ready to let it down. And all of a sudden it's gone. And I just hear a uh, mark. <laughs> and when Bo says it that way, it's not a good thing. And I turn around and look, he goes, probe's gone. And just a kink or something happened. So, and needless to say, those are gone. And, you know, that, that power pro, I think, saves a lot along with the snubbers. It's in with us being down there on the bottom, beating it. It's a lot more forgiving. Sure. Well, that's probably a whole nother conversation about uh, that we could have about uh, vibration and, and, you know, oh, yes. electrical energy that's being transferred. Um, so at some point we'll get back to that one, but <laughs> right. I, uh, I hope you guys have uh, picked up on a couple of things. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment on the video and try to get back to it as soon as we can. Uh, but enjoy the rest of your day and get out there and catch some more fish. <laughs>